we are going to do 6.5 here over two days. So we'll do 6.5 today and tomorrow, have our test on Friday. All right, so now we're actually solving equations. All we've been doing the last couple of days, there's been no equal sign to it. And so we haven't been doing any solving. All we've been doing is simplifying. We've just been hammering out. How do we simplify? Keep going, keep simplifying. Now let's actually introduce an equal sign and we can solve now for a variable. So solving radical equations, very first step, isolate that radical, meaning one side of your equal sign is going to have the radical on it and the other side is just going to be a bunch of numbers. Okay? Or numbers will be on the other side. So do all the work to get just a single radical and you could have some stuff going on under the radical, but keep that radical, get it to one side. That's what I mean, isolate the radical. Use the inverse power, okay? So if I had x raised to the one half, the inverse power of that would be two over one. So I know with exponents, separated by that parentheses, I multiply those together, so I end up with x raised to 2 over 2, so that's just x. So using that inverse power is how I can undo the radical. And then last step, solve. Okay, so let's actually get into doing some... So first one, three plus, oops, is that what I do? Get that back. Oh, yeah, right there. Three plus the square root, two x minus three equals eight. We are solving now. So we want to figure out, okay, what value of x can I put in there to get eight as an output? All right, so we want to isolate that radical. How we can do that is by subtracting 3 from each side. So now all I have is 2x minus 3 on this side, and then 5 on this side. Now, to undo that radical, so this is where it comes in when I said about that inverse power. We know that we could square this, and uh, anything square root squared eliminates or undoes the radical. But then I have to do the same thing on the right. If I were to think about this in exponential form, square root of 2x minus 3 is the same thing as 2x minus 3 raised to the 1 half power. When we introduced this squaring, that's that 2 over 1. All right? Either way you think about it, with rational exponents or a radical, it's, it all matches back up. If you square a square root, it undoes it, and you're left with just the radicand. If you have a 1 half power and you, and you square that, it eliminates it, and so all you're left with is that 2x minus 3 is what we want. So this is now just 2x minus 3 without any radical going on. But this equals 25. Now we have a simple equation that you've been solving since 5th grade, 6th grade, 7th grade. All we do is add 3, add 3, 2x equals 28, divide by 2, divide by 2, x would equal 14. But again, that first step, isolate the radical. Get the radical all by itself. We didn't want that 3 plus going on. We wanted just the radical. Next one. 2 times square root 4x plus 1 minus 6. Okay. Well, do I add the 6 to both sides first, or do I divide by 2 first? 
and it matters. So this gets back to order of operations, so that PEMDAS that we know. Whenever we are solving, we go backwards. So we want to undo any subtraction first, and then undo any addition, and then any division, and then any multiplication, then any exponents, then any parentheses. That parentheses, sometimes that's replaced with G for grouping. Like your radical, that would be considered a grouping. All right, so we want to undo the subtraction first, and so we want to add. So add 6, add 6. I have 2, 4x plus 1 now is going to be equal to 6. I don't have any addition. I don't have any division. Now I'm going to tackle that multiplication. So I'm going to divide this by 2, this by 2. And so now I've isolated the radical. And I have square root 4x plus 1 equals 3. All right. That order is important. Okay. If you divided by 2 first, you would have ended up with 0 divided by 2, which 0 divided by 2 is a thing, but it's 0 still. And then you would have added 6, and so you would have got all of this equaling 6, which is not true. The order of operations is important. All right. What I'm going to do here, I have a square root, so I'll just square both sides. And that leaves me with 4x plus 1 equals 9. Subtract 1, subtract 1. 4x then would equal 8. Divide by 4, divide by 4. x equals 2. All right, but this is good to, this PEMDAS in reverse is for solving. We go this direction when simplifying. So good old math. They try to make it confusing for you. But it is different. When we, when we are simplifying, we actually tackle the parentheses, then the exponents, then the multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction. So simplify, we go PEMDAS in the correct order. Solving, we actually do it in the reverse order because we're trying to undo what's happening. All right, solving rational exponent equations. So this is, this is pretty much the same thing, but we want to isolate the base and the rational exponent. Well, we know any rational exponent can be written as a radical and vice versa, so the rules are pretty much the same. Or they are the same. We want to get to where we just have a base raised to a rational exponent. There's no two times going on. There's not that minus five. None of that garbage is going on. We've isolated it. And then that idea of reciprocal power, that's I mean, what I showed you what we were doing with radicals, but that's transfers over to right here. That's what we're doing with rational exponents because rational exponents and radicals can be treated the same. They have the same rules because we can write them either way easily. But this right here in black, this is a key piece that I would encourage you put a box around this, star this, Put this in your notes. This is the easiest part to get points taken off is we forget this. And we'll do some examples to clarify what exactly this means. If the numerator of the rational exponent of the original problem is even, okay? So I have two-thirds or I have four-sevenths. I have that even numerator when we are solving, we have to bring in plus minus. Okay? And the simplest example to this, we did this last term in Algebra 1A or Algebra 2A. You've done this before. If I told you, I gave you the equation x squared equals 4. Well, now all this work with rational exponents, we could write that as x raised to the 2 over 1. So hopefully, it was ingrained in you from last term, okay, what can I square to get 4? It's going to be plus minus 2. So again, that's that plus minus that came into play, because you have to be thinking ahead, okay, what can I square? 2 squared will get me 4, but also negative 2 will get me, get me 4. And that's coming right here from this box in 
reminder, because our numerator was an even number, that's why it happened. X cubed doesn't work. Okay, it's three over one. X to the five sevenths doesn't work. Okay, X to the four sevenths does. That does introduce that plus minus. All right, so let's do a couple with this. Again, we're trying to solve what value of x can I put into this binomial to get 12 as an output. All right, well, I'm solving, so I want to undo any subtraction, addition, division, multiplication. I want to undo that first and isolate my rational piece. Okay. Now, two thirds. Well, that's that's kind of a, a messy one. Like when it was square root, we know we would just square both sides. But again, this brings in that three halves will be our inverse reciprocal exponents. So this will also be raised to the three halves. Two-thirds, if I'm looking on the left here, the exponent of two-thirds raised to the three halves, I multiply those across, I end up with six over six, which is one, and so that's why we only end up with x plus one. All right, clean that all up. By doing that extra work, it cleaned it up. On the right here, now I have four raised to the three halves, okay? So I know if I were to think with radicals, this would be the square root of four cubed. Okay. The square root of four is two, two cubed is eight, plus minus eight. So x plus one equals plus minus eight. So from this, we can think of it as broken up. This is saying x plus 1 equals a positive 8, and x plus 1 equals a negative 8. You want to think of that plus minus that's saying it equals this, and it equals this. So we have to figure out two values of x. So in this one, we know x would equal 7. In this one, x would equal a negative 9. When we're solving, we end up with that plus minus. It means we got to do it twice. We got to make sure we take into account the positive eight and the negative eight. Okay. One more example: two times x minus four raised to the three halves plus three equals fifty-seven. Okay. Again, PEMDAS, but in reverse. So I want to do, I don't have any subtraction, I want to undo this addition by subtraction. So I have 2 times x minus 4 raised to the 3 halves is going to be equal now to 54. Divide everything by 2, and I have x plus 4 raised to the 3 halves will equal 50. Oh equal, not 54, 27. Using my reciprocal exponents to solve, this would now be raised to the two-thirds. This would be raised to the two-thirds. So 27 raised to the two-thirds, that's the same thing as the cube root of 27 squared. Cube root of 27 is 3. 3 squared will equal 9. I do not need a plus minus because my numerator here on the left was 3. So I do not need that plus minus. It is strictly 9. And then all I have left with over here is x plus 4. Subtract 4. Uh, or, 
made a mistake here. This should have been x minus 4. There we go. So x would equal 13. And all of these cube roots that we're doing, square roots, I mean, it seems like we've been doing more and more cube roots. So hopefully you're getting, through repetition, you're starting to learn those cube roots a little bit more. Okay, We, we haven't practiced those, those very much, but we're seeing so many of them now that hopefully you're starting to see them. Yep, cube root of 27, I know that's 3. 3 squared is 9. This concept is a width calculator concept. So I didn't say if it was or wasn't. Since I didn't say it wasn't, it was implying that it was, but yes, this is a width calculator concept. But all this simplifying was the last concept. You need to be able to do that without a calculator. Okay, last one. Let's look at an application type problem. For Meteor Crater in Arizona, the formula D equals 2 times the cube root of V divided by 0.3 relates the diameter of the rim in meters. Okay, so we got to make sure we understand what's going on here. So we have a diameter in meters. V is the volume in meters. What is the volume of the meteor crater? Okay, they give us 1.2 kilometers for this diameter, but we cannot forget diameter in the original statement is in meters. They give it to us in kilometers. What is 1.2 kilometers to meters? Yep, 1,200. Okay, so 1.2 kilometers is 1,200 meters. That's the first step. We got to, because everything cubic meters, diameter in meters, we got to make sure everything's in meters. Okay, and again, all 1,000. From a meter to a kilometer, it's just multiplying by 1,000. So 1 1.2 times 1,000 is 1,200. Okay, all right, so they give us the formula. D equals 2 times the cube root of V divided by 0 0.3. They give us diameter, which is 1,200, 2 times the cube root of V over 0 0.3. We have to solve for V. Okay. Order of operations, I want to get rid of that multiple of 2 on that side, so I'll divide it out. So now I only have 600 equals the cube root of V divided by 0 0.3. To undo that cube root, I am going to cube it. I'm cubing on the right, I have to cube on the left. Okay, you could have thought of that radical as a rational exponent raised to the one-third power, so the reciprocal would have been 3 over 1. Same thing. Okay, so 6,000, or I'm sorry, 600 cubed is a really big number. 216 million is going to be equal to V divided by 0 0.3. I, for sure, I'd give you this one with the calculator. I wouldn't ask you to do 600 cubed. It's not what I'm trying to get out of this, this section. All right, and then to solve for V, I multiply each side by 0 0.3. That goes to a useful form of 1. So I have to multiply this side by 0 0.3. Then all I'm left with on the right is V, which ends up being 64,800,000 meters cubed. A 
but really the, probably the trickiest part of this one was not writing D as 1.2, changing it over to meters, and then I feel confident that we could solve for an unknown under the radical simply by undoing the operations. Got it? Okay, so 9 through 17, 18 through 25, work through those. Make sure that's submitted before the start of class tomorrow. Oh.